Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Flow Station. Joining me today is a very special guest in Andre Watson. Andre is a sports performance coach in the Pacific Northwest. And what stands out to me about him is just how much he cares about the athletes that he works with. A lot of times in this industry, you can get coaches who are only in it for the money or only care about themselves. And Andre is someone who changes that mold. In this podcast, we discuss just that very concept, parenting, coaching, cell phone use, and much more. I think you guys will really enjoy this conversation of someone who I really respect and uh, I hope to continue to learn from in the future. So enjoy the episode and keep flowing. Welcome back to the Flow Station. The mics are the cameras over here now. We switched it up a little bit because we got a very special guest. Andre Watson's in the building today. Thank you for joining me, man. Uh, thank you for having me. Man, this is a pretty cool setup. Yeah, yeah man. It's been... Do this at- do it's, this in a dungeon, okay? Yeah, exactly. Serious. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's an honor to have you here, bro. I've been training with Andre now. I've trained with him three times. Met him uh, through a mutual friend, and it's been uh, we kind of hit it off ever since. But awesome experience really so bad. far training with you. Just little insights that I feel like I'm super, I'm super in tune with absorbing now, and I'm super mm-hmm. grateful for everything that you've done for me so far. And it, I look forward to this conversation here more about your process and how you got to where you are. Um, so just to kick it off, what, what was your journey in sport and kind of what got you into wanting to assist other athletes get to their potential? Well, I'd started out playing different sports, you know, baseball, soccer, basketball, track, all things like that. Mm -hmm. I should have actually stayed with soccer, Mm -hmm. but you know, followed the crowd, went to play football, was all right. Wasn't the best. But I still should have stayed with soccer. That was my heart. But I followed the followed the crowd, and after a while, you get dogged out enough, mm-hmm. you start seeing stuff. And at that time, I did not know how to shut my mouth. And some people will say right now, I still don't know how to shut my <laughs> mouth. Okay, and I take that as an honor. That's a, that's a blessing. Okay? Well, it's good that you're on the podcast scene then. Yeah, I appreciate a lot of people who like to talk. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. No, I appreciate you having me here. Of course, man. And the trust of you and I working out together. Yeah. Man, I love it. Yeah. You've been been putting it down. (laughs) Yeah. No, I appreciate it, bro. Because I try to run people out sometimes. Yeah. No, (laughs) actually, that was the first thing you said to me. You're like, yeah, if anyone's training with me, I'm trying to get rid of them. And uh, I don't know, you had some unique thoughts and and ways of thinking uh, about training athletes and what specifically kind of got you into wanting to work with people and then you know where do you feel like your greatest gift is with training kids i just hated to see kids get done wrong all the time yeah you know because there's so many gadgets out there there's so many people that would lie to these kids Mm -hmm. and then i would end up picking up the pieces whether i was training or not training yeah because i'd sit back and the kids would gravitate towards me and and they would they would vent Mm -hmm. and so after a while, I just got to the point, you know what? This has got to change, Yeah. you know, and started training my son a little bit, you know, in, in, uh, in football a little bit and stuff like that. Talked about life, and then I had to turn him over, and uh, so that went, pr- that went pretty well. Um, went to Bellevue High School. They won these championships, beat De La Salle, and uh, I swore I would never do this again, okay? Then my daughter comes along. She started soccer, so started going, doing those kinds of things with her. And I started seeing, because she didn't have the speed mm-hmm. that other little kids had, but I did know one thing. Roses don't always bloom at the same time. Yeah. And it got frustrating as a parent. Like, I know a lot of parents get frustrated because their kids aren't running fast. They're not doing pro stuff. You know, and I had to pump my brakes and realize, whoa, hold up a second. No. She's six years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and some of these parents need to pump their brakes to right. realize your kid's not going pro at six years old. Right. Okay. And they're not going to be the next Marta or the next Alex Morgan. And you can't be them. Mm-hmm. They can only be the best they can be. And so from that point, it got into the dungeon. Yeah. You know, brought it inside. Yeah. And I'll, it's crazy you say, just how you describe that in general is, is, exactly what I see from just training with you is like mm-hmm. everyone wants the fanciest stuff to train oh let me let me get in there into the nicest gym ever and you know not see the results but at least I'm in a nice gym and you know that's a obviously there's there's a 
there's a need for big spaces and yes. to work with a lot of athletes. But for me, it's like you and I both connect on a deep level because I feel like we look at what's inside, not just what's external. Exactly. Like what can you gain that's going to serve you past just the fancy stuff or the, the new gear? And, you know, just to preface it, so when I come to tr- train with you, it's in Sorry. your basement. Mm-hmm. And you've somehow molded the whole basement into you got different types of treadmills, you got the Vertimaxes, you got you know the bench presses and the bars in the in the opposite room. There's a lot of different things packed into one tiny space. Oh yes. But the efficiency and the skill of your the way that you coach is as high level as I've been around. And so Appreciate that's that. what I feel like matters. And mm-hmm. is that something that you've taken to heart? Yeah, I never you know. It's funny you say that because I just never looked at it that way because I always was trying to give to the kids. Mm -hmm. And it just blows my mind sometimes because I don't think about myself. It's not about me. It's about the kids. And, yes, it's a small space. But you know what? When when they get down there, sometimes it's it's 15 kids. We utilize the garage. We utilize outside. We utilize whatever we have to utilize. But they all understand they're there for one reason, and that is results. That is, hey, how can we help the next person? How can we help the next athlete? It's not a whole bunch of animosity going on, you know. And no, we don't have the fanciest equipment. But you know what? I don't care because mm-hmm. the bottom line is what. Guess what? At the end of the day, that kid goes where home. So when he le- when he's with us, he or she, I want them to know we care about them. It's not about me. It's not about okay if you're the fastest person, because speed to me doesn't mean a thing. Because if you, like we talked about earlier, mm-hmm. in, your, in, in, in your sport, basketball, I could be the fastest person on the, field, on the, on the court, but if I can't do a layup, right. what good am I? Right. But coaches make the biggest mistakes and say, he's fast, so he gets a pass. What about the young lady or the young man that's not as fast, but they add more value to the team? Mm-hmm. But it doesn't look good on the coach's part. Could be political. Could be whatever. I don't know, you know, but I got tired of seeing that. So I sit the kids down and let them know when they first come in, it's about you. It's not about your mom and dad. It's not about me. What do you want and what do you need? And we'll, we'll chop it up about that and we'll come to a middle ground. Yeah. It's not about you're going to do this this way. Mm-hmm. You're going to do it that way. No, it's not even that. It's yeah. about what are we going to do together because we built a family. Yeah. And every kid that we train, they know they can call any time, day or night with any issues. And they've done it, sometimes two, three in the morning. I love it. And the reason why is because guess what? I would want somebody to do that for my kids or my grandkids, you know, somebody that they trust. And that's the key. Mm-hmm. Today's world, <sighs> I don't hate to say it. I'm just going to say it like it is. Bottom line is a lot of people don't care. They say they do. But then their actions are totally different, mm-hmm. you know. And so that's when we're dealing with the kids. It's fun. Uh, it's demanding. Um, yeah, I demand a lot. I do because I demand a lot of myself. And so I'll ask the kids, hey, what can you give me today? They'll tell me whatever number. I'll up it mm. because I know Human nature is going to take the easiest route, right? So we up the numbers, or we'll up the we'll up the consistency or whatever. Uh, not consistency, but uh, I just intensity. Say cons- intensity, yes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we'll up that, and um, in the long run, when they got a smile on their face, or even when they're even when they're cussing underneath their breath, I'm smiling yeah. because they win. Yeah. When they win, I win. Mm-hmm. If they don't win, I don't win. Mm-hmm. That's the cool part. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and that that's something that really stuck out to me as well when I first met you. Um, you were like, you kind of always take a like a temperature of the room in a sense. Like, I asked you, do you feel like kids that you're training are more stressed or more anxious and stuff like that? And you're like, yeah. But one thing I try to do is make them aware or totally conscious of the reason why that's occurring. Yes. So instead of just, oh, I'm stressed and uh, I I can't train today. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, well, what happened? And not, you don't want them to feel like they need to have the correct answer, but just pieces of the puzzle for that so that they're aware for the next time. And I feel like that's huge. And a couple other things that I've just learned from you so far, 
I think I even said it. I was like, hey, you're like, hey, bro, you were staying on your breath. Just let go. Because I think that was my, that's been my biggest problem mm-hmm. in life is Remember that. I oh. work really hard, but I struggle with letting go at times and trusting the work that I put in. And that's all confidence. That's all understanding that. And you're like, bro, you stepping in this house today is, is part of letting go. Mm-hmm. You even reaching out to me to try and train, that's letting go. And I it really shifted a, a thing in my mind because it takes away judgment. It's like, okay, yeah, even if I didn't feel like I was fully in flow today, there was an element that I've been working towards and it's a process to the end. And I feel like yeah. you have such a good awareness of that to where most trainers, if they don't genuinely care, they wouldn't they wouldn't give an insight like that. They would push you to the max so that you feel super sore and you feel like you had a good workout. Yeah. But there's levels to it, and that's the first thing I would like to ask. You are big on the mental side. You are huge on getting them to train that as well. And I was I was like, how do you how do you do that? How do you get into a kid's head and and assist them through? issues that are worries or doubts Mm -hmm. and you know one example is we train sometimes you had music but today dead silent it's just me and the me and the craft (laughs) and yes that's that's not the greatest feeling because you're you're trying to dial in on something else but in a game you're not going to have all those distractions you're not going to have your phone to go check nope um so i don't know i'm just trying to give my experience so far with you because I've really enjoyed it and I feel like I've taken a bunch from it uh, so far. But anything else that you'd like to discuss on the mental side of stuff and how you assist athletes in that uh, realm? And it's funny, you did pick up on that no music today, huh? Oh, I was yeah. thinking that, about that when you were working out. I said, I wonder if he'll pick up on it. But you, you pick up on a lot of stuff. <laughs> and one of the biggest keys, if we go back when we're sitting down with the kids, we teach them how to know their surroundings. Yeah. You know, not just in the dungeon, but just, you know, walking to your car, mm. walking to class, going to the mall. Know your surroundings because you don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. If there's a hole, you know, you don't want to step in that hole. You know, if you do fall, how are you going to fall to protect yourself? You know, just little things that a lot of people say, oh, that's stupid. No, it's not stupid. It's not stupid when you fall in there and you mm-hmm. hurt yourself and don't know how to fall, right? Yeah. Um, mental part, I, I tell the kids, I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable. I want you to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And they look at you like you're crazy. Okay. All right. I got something for you. Let's try this workout. And you can see it. First time I have the music on sometimes, I'll shut it off. Sometimes I'll turn it loud. Yeah. And it's just to shake them. Mm-hmm. And it's not the harm. It's just to shake them and see what I'm dealing with. And one of the big, biggest revealers is when you turn the music off, now it's just them and them. Mm-hmm. That reveals, do they need an outside stimulus always to keep them going, or can they do it internally? Mm-hmm. The outside is always needing somebody else's input yeah, or the input from a song. Yeah, When you get down to it and it's you and you shooting that basket, you've been there before. Mm-hmm. What are you saying to yourself? (laughs) You know? And I feel like it's so cool that it's so cool to talk about that, but it's funny when you're in it, you're like, oh, just put some music on, man. Or like have something. And, but you think about it, like today was a huge win because Mm -hmm. the only thing that we had was us, like, and, you know, the weights. Exactly. You know, there's nothing else that's interfering. And (laughs) in the craft, and especially in flow, you want that attention dialed in on one element and one aspect yes um that's i mean to me that's a very unique style that you have just to kind of to test people and uh to see where their mental state is when it does get tough like what's their first what are the first words they say after a tough set like you know what i'm saying i and and i don't know i would i would like to hear you speak more on it but i'm just trying to give my experience of just training with you ju- thus far, but um, any any other insights into the mental side that you feel like, or maybe even good examples that you have of athletes that have upgraded from just training with you? Oh my goodness, uh, there's been a lot of cussing. <laughs> uh, we've got some quiet guys, yeah, and they'll they'll look around, they'll know their surroundings, and once they start feeling comfortable, then they start opening up. But sometimes I want to push that issue. 
Yeah. So I might change a workout just to see what I can get. And one gentleman, <laughs> he goes to he goes to your old alma mater. <laughs> oh, to APU or Newport? <laughs> to uh, Eastern. Oh, got you. And uh, real quiet, real quiet gentleman. And I was like, I'm getting tired of him being quiet because he's got something that, that mm-hmm. I want. I want to learn from him because I learn from all these kids. It's mm-hmm. not about me just always pouring in. They got to re- they realize they well they, a lot of them don't realize I'm taking back mm-hmm. so that I can learn because if I learn I can teach them more. So back to him, <laughs> we put him in a certain workout and through the middle of the workout he was cussing. I was like, we got you, we got you, buddy, we got you. You finally opening up and you're talking. He goes, yeah, it just took me some time, Dre. I, I, I had to get comfortable. I said, yeah, okay, you got comfortable, all right, with being uncomfortable, didn't you? And the kid is, he's amazing. Give you some numbers on him. Before he came with us, he was running a 4-5. or five. And I didn't know this because I didn't even check the numbers. I didn't even ask him. I just asked him uh, a couple months ago, 4-5. or five. Now he's running a 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Mm. His uh, vertical went up, uh, I think it was 2 to 3 inches. And he just texted me a little bit ago, and his, what was it? His hex bar was 635 pounds. Wow. Just that weight alone describes what position would you say? Probably a lineman. No. Wide receiver. (laughs) Wide receiver. Crazy. And know the nice thing about it? He doesn't even know how to run yet. Yeah, he's still he's still running like he's as tall as me. He's six, <laughs> I think he's six one or six two. He's running like a short guy. And I'm like, bro, you got to change up your running. Let's let's tweak this. Let's tweak that. And the interesting part about it was we only worked with him for one summer. Mm-hmm. From a four or five to a four point four four, that's a good drop. Mm-hmm. Our next goal for him four threes, and he can get it. Uh, we only touched the track four times this whole summer, mm-hmm. and for him to get that, that's amazing. But he he uh, now he talks. Yeah. Now he talks. He shares stuff. He's like, okay, Dre, how do I do this? What do you think about this? Can I try this? Yeah, let's try it. Because like I said, it's not about me. Because mm-hmm. I might have a plan, but he might have B in his mind. Well, let's put them together. Let's mm-hmm. see which one works. Because it's about him. He's got the. He's the one that has to perform. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. No, that's awesome, man. And um, one thing I'd definitely like to touch on, especially in the mental side, is something we talked about yesterday and today: the knowledge versus the wisdom. And there's so many outlet. Or yeah, so many outlets and so many external things that are pouring into these kids more so than ever uh, yes. through phones. Uh, their friends are always in contact with them. I mean, I, even at the high school game I was at last night, you know, the parents are on their phone, the kids are on their phone, everybody's on their phone. Yes, sir. And to me, I'm, and I'm not, it's not like I'm not on my phone, but to me, I'm becoming more aware of like, damn, like I could definitely see this being a problem. Or I look over the student section and all the kids during a timeout are on their phones. Oh. And it's, it, to me, I feel like that's just constant stimuli. And like we discussed, without music, like who are you? Yeah. yeah you don't know who you are. You're getting no. fed all this information. And it could be in good information. It Excuse could be me. your coaches, your parents telling mm-hmm. you great stuff. But until it becomes your realization... Yes. And until, until it becomes your belief in yourself, it's nothing. It, 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 it is something, but it's not, it's not to the level that it needs to be. And so what have you seen with that? And if you can give insight into how athletes can change just knowledge into wisdom and really take and embody the confidence that you seem to ins- try to instill in them. Um, if you don't mind, let me take that, tr- that word try out. Yeah. Because... I don't believe in the word try. Mm-hmm. Either we do it or we don't. Because a lot of times these kids fall back up on, I'll try to do this, I'll mm-hmm. try to do that. Try try is usually in a lot of people's minds is a, already a failure word. Because I'll try to meet you tomorrow. Knowing darn well, tell the truth, you don't want to meet me. Right. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. 
If you don't want to meet me, then just say, look, I don't want to meet you. And I've had some kids say that. If you don't want to work out, there's no trying in it. Just say you don't want to work out. I'm not going to hold it against you. No big deal. But guess what? When we come back to the next workout, we're going to make it up. <laughs> we're going to make it up, okay? Yeah. We're going to make it up. But <sighs> I hate to tell. I hate to telephone. Even though when I was younger, I used to be on it all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we had the cord phones and the... <laughs> <laughs> but remember, I'm seven times three plus one, so... <laughs> and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But I, s- I agree with you. I was at the game last night, too, and I'm watching all these people on their cell phones. Look, we paid to get in this game. Yeah, it was only seven bucks, but seven bucks is seven bucks. Mm-hmm. Let's watch the game. If your friend invites you to see the game... They want you to be watching the game. Mm. They don't want you to be scrolling through stuff. Watch the game. You might learn something. When I go right. to the games, I watch and I tell the kids, get off the phone. Is it that important that it, you know that you have to take it right now? Is it mom? No. Dad? No. Sisters? No. And get off the phone. Watch the game. And they're like, oh, okay, okay, I can do that. I can do that. Because when they come to your game, it's disrespectful if they're on it, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, how do you think they feel? And we touch a lot on, you know, the extra stimuli because when they come in and work out, okay, take care of your business. You can be on the phone if you're expecting a call from mom and dad. That's understandable because it could be an emergency if there's spo- already a you know, predetermined thing that mom's going to call you at a certain time and they're with me. Leave it out. But if not, there's a cell phone box right there. Put it in there. Mm-hmm. You know, recovery time, I let them stay on their phones, you know, because that's where I learn. That's where I learn, like we talked about, today I'll sit back and let them recover you know we'll do massage th- massage things the they gun or whatever it is and I'll sit back there and I'll learn and the kids will tell you the darndest things mm-hmm. indirectly mm-hmm. you know how can I make myself better and I'm listening to this okay I missed that point dang I thought I had that covered so I go back into my memory bank yep I messed up then I can go apologize you know Things like that, but who? Man, that's the extra stimuli is just too much. I know kids will. I asked a kid, two siblings that were training with me, what's your end goal? They're like, we want to go to the NBA. Okay, that's long term goal. Okay, what about now? I want to make the high school basketball team. Okay, can you shoot left hand? No. Can you dribble left hand? No. Okay, why? Uh, we don't know. How much time do you spend at home on mm-hmm. videos? They're like, well, not that much. I said, okay, no problem. I believe you. How much time do you spend on your cell phone? Between these two siblings, they spent 40 hours. No, 50 hours. That's a full-time job and 10 hours of overtime. Damn. And couldn't shoot left-handed. Right. I ran into the kid at the basketball game. <laughs> last year and I said so you didn't make the team huh and they, the family told me Dre don't do it I'm like no I'm gonna I'm gonna confront him you didn't make the team right no why I don't know I said because you couldn't use your left hand you could not use your left hand but you could use your left thumb <laughs> you know and he was like, he looked legendary. at me with like why did you even talk to me that's but legendary I don't know any different yeah I mean I'm not trying to be no, but you have to, you have to because you have to give them the awareness. Yeah. And if they don't if they don't know, it's kind of like what we we talk about. How do you know if you don't know? You don't. So if they don't know, they're going to unconsciously choose something that's more comfortable. Yep. You're going to choose something that's made to be addicting. Oh, yes. <laughs> and beyond that, like to your, to your point, I was talking to the, the eighth graders on my team. Mm-hmm. They said some girl in their grade was on this app for like 37 hours in 2 days. 2 days. Dang. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, what is that doing to the human mind? Mm-hmm. What is the reason why they're on their phones all the time? And there's got to be some sort of feeling, that dopamine or something that gets yes. rushed in their brain that makes them feel like they're being productive on the way towards that goal of playing in the NBA or whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. To whereas they don't understand, that's not respecting or trusting the process at all. No, it's it's zero trust. And again. I'm guilty of it too. I'm probably on my phone too much, Mm -hmm. but there's levels to, you know, if you're not even aware that you're on your phone too much 
or oh, yeah. on these things that are you're like, oh shit, this is taking me out. Yes. <laughs> you are going to fall down a, a path that you don't want to fall down or you're not going to be as productive. You're not going to work as hard. Um, so what, uh, what other awareness have you, have you seen with the technology and, and I mean, we've gone into it. There's mm-hmm. some benefit to it, yes, to there, connecting with is. people. And, um, but where do you think we can take it in terms of, or maybe even the awareness that you give people when you're training mm-hmm. them to put their phone away and there's no stimuli, maybe that's an awareness point for them yeah. to be like, damn, this is hard without the oh, extra yeah. help. Oh, yeah. uh, but I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing uh, and, and just hoping that kind of sparks something in you to, that you've remembered through training kids. Ah, oh, man. You know, the biggest, I think the biggest challenge, and I know a lot of parents don't want to hear it, who pays the bills? Mm-hmm. The, uh, the parents pay the bills, right? And uh, anybody that knows me knows. It is your fault as a parent if your kid is on there 37 hours. Yeah. Yeah. You pay the bill. Who's the kid? I mean, who's the parent? You or the kid? And I think nowadays, not all people, please, I know I can offend people, but I'm sorry. If the shoe fits, wear it. Mm-hmm. As an adult, cut the darn time down. Mm-hmm. Make them earn the cell phone. Okay, stop. Oh, hey, little Johnny, go to the corner. You know, go play with your cell phone. Get out of my hair. Uh, you wonder why your kid's no good at sports. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's good at thumbs. <laughs> but what are you going to do with the thumbs? I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I get pissed off because some parents will ask me to help. And then I'll say, okay, can you help here? Okay, I'll talk, share my experiences. And then when they get home, what you just asked me to do, you circumvent. Mm-hmm. So we're right back at zero. But that's not my fault. That's yours as a parent. I can't take the hit on that. I'll take the hit on what's rightfully mine. But I can't take the hit when it comes to your household. You got to take that hit. Man up or woman up. Say, look, you know what? You're going to cry. You're 15 years old. You're going to cry because I take your phone? Oh, well. (laughs) So what? What are they going to do? Cry? Well, I won't talk to you. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. We're back at square one (laughs) where we wanted to be. Yeah, a lot of it. A lot of it is, I understand. Some of the parents are addicted to, I use my cell phone to learn. Mm-hmm. I learn a lot off of what to do and what not to do. Um, some of the kids I'll send stuff to. And I, I haven't researched some of the stuff. Like you and I talked about, I send it to see what their response is going to be. Mm-hmm. You get back, like, like, like. Some of the kids I'll call up, depending on what mood I'm in, whoa, did you read this whole article? No. Why'd you like it? Just because everybody else likes it, right? Yeah. That's not the issue. The yeah. issue is we're trying to help you. We don't train for the sport. We train for life because sports is going to end. Yep. So I told my daughter, we don't train for the sport. We train for life because a lot of times, you and I both know school, how much time do they get for, what did you tell me the other day, hmm. that they get 15-minute recess? Yeah. <laughs> but that's for the teachers. <laughs> to get a break, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, how much time do the kids really get to take care of their bodies? Mm-hmm. How much running around do they really get to do? Because we're in a different world now. You know, everything's on video. You've got dangers out there. A lot of kids don't understand they're being tracked on these cell phones. These are some of the things that we talk about, you know, in yeah. your training. Yeah. You know, what's that got to do with training? Uh, it's got a lot to do with a life. A lot, a lot. Yeah, because whatever happens, the external stuff, and they come with us, now it's our challenge. Yep. We've got to deal with it. So let's show them how to dilute it. Yeah, I love that. You know, and if we can show them how to dilute it, and they keep going back, we just keep going back, mm-hmm. diluting it and diluting it more. It's like, what do they say? You plant the seed, somebody will come along and water it, right? Yeah. And that's what we, that's what we do, you know. Love that. No, that's great awareness, man. And we've talked a lot about parents and coaches and how they can affect just the athlete's performance and – um, you know, me having worked with, you know, younger kids now, mm-hmm. and there's definitely, um, it's definitely a lot more difficult than just spitballing ideas, you know, and mm-hmm. like, oh, here's, here's the way that I, like I was joking with my brother, I was like, I took a leadership master's, you know, courses for a full year. Okay. I've learned more about leadership coaching an eighth grade basketball team than that whole year yep. by far. And, yep. you know, cause 
you can read a book. It's, it kind of goes back to the knowledge and wisdom thing, but you can read a book, but when you're in a game and you have to control your emotions and your ego when you're dealing with kids and, and in practice and trying to set them up for the best success and you want to get out of the way, that's a way different battle because oh. the mind starts to get into the game. Um, but how have you seen parents and coaches – who maybe aren't as aware of how they can affect these kids and just their whole embodiment of how they carry themselves um, affects just the athlete's performance and enjoyment of the game. Well, number one, I'm guilty. I'll be the first to say I'm pointing all fingers at me, all of them, toes too, okay? (laughs) I've been very guilty, you know, with my daughter, Mm -hmm. pushing her, doing this, saying these certain things, car rides home. I'm very guilty. I'll be the first one to say it. I've apologized probably however many times, right? I don't apologize anymore because I've toned it down. Mm-hmm. Car ride, okay. How do you, how'd you do? Okay, whatever. She'll tell me stuff now. Mm. Whereas before, I was ignorant. I'll be honest. I was. Yeah. You know, I really, really was. And the reason why I can talk that mess is because I went through it personally. Yeah. I hurt her feelings. She hurt my feelings. Which she had every right to because I should have never hurt her feelings. But it was a growing process. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind going through that growing process. And I don't mind sharing it because most people aren't going to share their failures. As a father, I fail every day. I'm human. I I wish that more parents would understand, look, once again, like in the beginning when we were talking, your kid's not going pro at six years old. Hmm. Figure out how your kid learns and get out of the way. Because most kids, most parents don't know how their kids learn. Mm-hmm. It's just like school. You've got 30 something kids, and the kid with the worst temper is always labeled. Like we talked about today, the labels, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what if there's something visual, the teacher's doing visual stuff, but that kid learns audio? audio. Nobody ever, n- hardly anybody ever thinks about that, right? Yeah. But it, he or she's a bad kid. Yeah, and you got to catch it soon because then they'll start to believe that, oh, yes. gosh, I just can't learn, so I'm just going to try and hide behind what I know. But, I mean, that segues perfectly into the labels that we were talking about. Yep. And I'm assuming what would happen after games is you would try to tell her maybe what she could have done better. Exactly. And um, I'm sure a lot of parents do that, and mm-hmm. that sometimes can really affect what the coach is trying to nail in, especially if you respect and trust the coach you got to respect and trust the coach on that car ride home at home so you're not you're not feeding them separate information from what yep. they're gaining from the coach and i feel like um i feel like actually from a podcast i've listened to recently it was like the labels are very detrimental to kids health but most of the issues can be fixed just by listening to them yep. and allowing them to become conscious of the issue allowing them to become conscious of what's, you know, bringing them down versus you should be feeling this way and do this and this and this and this. And yeah. again, like you said, I, I mean, I don't have kids, but I already know how hard that would be. Like, Boy. especially when that's your baby out yeah. there, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, so have you been able to kind of break through with parents lately it, when they gain trust with you and see the results from, you know, their kids on the court or, yeah. uh, you know, in the field? Yeah, it's actually been pretty cool because – my my uh, my responsibility is to the athletes, mm-hmm. okay, and it's not to the coaches because, you know, back up just a little bit, you know, like you said, the coach is saying one thing, I might be saying another thing or another, a parent might be saying another, another thing, whatever. My biggest thing was I didn't trust half the coaches, mm-hmm. and, they, and I had a good reason for that. Yeah. You know, very, very good reason. We had a particular incident where, Coach told, threatened my daughter, if you dribble the ball more than three times, I'll take you out. Mm. Excuse me? This is developmental. Yeah, that'll right. kill a kid's confidence. Exactly. And is that is that when you mean that you don't trust the coaches? Is that what you mean? It's like, okay, maybe my daughter shouldn't be dribbling that much, but to put a limit like that, to say three mm-hmm. dribbles and that's it, that's going to kill her development for long term. Exactly. It's not just for the success of the, the game in there. Is that what you mean by the, the lack of trust? That and watching other kids be able to lose the ball Mm. 20-something, 30-something times. See, 
you're trying to force that kid to be good, but you weren't allowing her to be good. Interesting. Give wow. her, to, give her, or any other kid, yeah, the same respect. Yeah. Just right. because you don't see potential mm-hmm. the way you want to see it, yeah, doesn't mean because you see potential over here that that's going to work out. Yep. It's funny because that same coach, as my daughter got older, hmm, she scored the winning goal against him. Mm. Wouldn't speak to her. <laughs> and and even go back, she helped that team win a championship. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Well, I mean, as we discussed, the coach's ego, If you know, there's so much that rides on the play. The players are 90% of the battle, not yes. 85%, 80% of the battle. A high number. The coach is... You know, if you're not going to take the full responsibility on a loss, you should not take the full responsibility on a win. Exactly. I agree and you should just – so that what, the, what that means is be a neutral presence that allows them to learn for themselves and to grow for themselves and not, not try and take credit for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I oh, feel yeah. like that's, again, harder concept to apply than we, we even know. Oh, but yes. that's where I feel like we – we hinder kids. And I feel like that's why I've really respected being with you is because I can just tell, like I can tell you care about really assisting the kids. And if, whether they know it or not, you've kind of let that go. And I'm sure that's still a process and, you know, in itself, but, um, how, how about for yourself? Like when, how has your journey been as a trainer of understanding that role of, okay, you know, I got to let myself go a little bit to mm-hmm. assist them even more and listen to them and maybe play off of them and not always get the credit that, you know, probably is deserving. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know if I worded that well. No, it's a challenging thing because I have to learn sometimes to shut my mind off and mm-hmm. let my heart go. Yeah. Or vice versa. Yeah. And like we talked about today. This is my first time doing this. This is cool. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you, bro. This is an honor. Yeah. No, I appreciate it's an honor it to have you, bro. This is getting me out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Because I'm so used to talking to kids, right? Mm-hmm. And it's and it's like talking to adults sometimes. It's like I'm the one that goes in the corner sometimes, <laughs> right? It's like, man, but I, I, I appreciate what you do. And it's like uh, – I just want to sit in the back. I don't want any credit for anything. Mm-hmm. I, when I sit down with the kids and their parents, I tell them this, look, I don't want any credit. There are going to be a lot of trainers out there or skills guys. They're going to want all the credit. I don't want anything except for, hello, how you doing if you see me? Wave at me if you can't, if it's too far away. <clears throat> Something, throw a shoe at me. Acknowledge me. Mm-hmm. That's all I want. When you come in, speak, say hello. That's it. That's all I want. And that's, and that's the honest truth. I'm not asking to be plastered over this or be in this or be that. <clears throat> I win when they win. Yeah, That's the cool part about it. Because when I go home, I can sit back and reflect on, man, she couldn't do this. But in the game, she did it. Yeah, I don't go jumping to the mountaintop saying, I did this. No, it's not about me. Yeah. It's about them. Yeah. But I can smile. And when she messes up, I take full responsibility. Yeah, I should have taught it different. Mm-hmm. The only time I can't take responsibility to be realistic is if we've gone over and over and over and over it and then you just choke, that's fine. That's part of life. That's learning. Mm-hmm. Now I see, okay, she choked. Now let me put her back in that same position Yeah. so she doesn't choke, mm-hmm. so she doesn't go back into her shell. Yeah. You know. So I like to stay in the background and, and, and text and call and just get feedback from the kids. But there, cool there's part. a beauty in that because the connections that I feel like you've been able to make lately too, it's, it's just a, it's because of that mentality. Mm-hmm. Most, and, and I would love to tap in on this. We don't have to name names, but there's a lot of training facilities and there's a lot of different trainers out there, yes, there is. that might not have that same care as you, but might have the marketing and the, mm-hmm. and the ability to promote the athletes they've taken to next levels and stuff like that. Um, what do you see in that, in, in those type of training styles? Do you see just a lack of concern for injury prevention, a lack of concern for actual true development, individualized development? Like, where do you feel like you differ from other training facilities that 
could just be wanted to make money or just, you know, running the business mm-hmm. the best they can. One, I'm me. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, situations like this, I have to say to myself because times I get nervous. I have fear like anybody else, but you know what? And it sounds conceited, but everybody's got a trigger word. I just learned to use mine. I love me some me. Mm-hmm. I have to love me in order to love them. If I don't love me, I can't love them. Every athlete we have knows I'll go to their games. They know I'm their biggest critic. They know I'm a, their biggest cheerleader. I mean, ju- we just finished the season for basketball. Whole family made it every single game. That's awesome. Didn't have to. Wasn't getting paid to do it. Wasn't about that. Okay. And yes, a lot of facilities have tons more kids. Okay. They do. But think about this. We have, let me share this with you. We have a young man that, back to that label stuff, right? Mm-hmm. They, they labeled him autistic. I'm like, okay. So I did some research and asked a doctor. I said, what's this word? Autistic is being thrown around. Is it being thrown around loosely? Mm. He said, yeah. He goes, because a true autistic kid couldn't do what I'm about to share with you, okay? True autis- autistic kid couldn't. And young man's name is Tim. He came to us uh, through another it was referral, and he didn't want me to know. I call him special. He's a special kid. He really is. He's a cool kid. And he came, and so he didn't want me to know that this label, right? And so I already knew because I could tell this, you know, by the way he was acting a little bit and all this kind of stuff. And he kept saying, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. 15, 20 times a workout, right? No big deal. He was testing me and my patients. I was testing what he could do, what he couldn't do. Certain things I couldn't do with him, right? Because... And watching his body language and how he did certain things, I was I would be putting him in danger if I did, let's say, squats. Because mm-hmm. when he did a squat, when he squatted, instead of going down, he went over to his left and then came back over into the middle. No go, right? Hmm. We weren't doing any of that. So we work with what we have for the short period of time. Tim runs track. The year before, and this pissed me off so much. Oh, it must made me cry. Where he, um, ugh. He he uh who excuse me. <laughs> he used to run by himself. I'm like, how do the coaches let you run track meets by yourself? That's foul. And so uh he did. He started training with us. Next thing I know, this kid did not finish last. He was running with the he was running with his with his heats and he was happy, his mom was happy. He come back to training. Same thing, 15, 20 times, right? I'm like, okay, this is cool. How am I going to learn to teach him? He was teaching me it's okay to be different. Mm. It's okay. And I was like, wow. He texts me one race I wasn't able to make it, and he PR'd in the 100, the 200, and the 400 in one meet. Wow. Some of our top guys never did that Mm. so my next question was did your coach recognize it no I'll be honest there were some words that came out of my mouth and I'm like how in the hell did this coach not recognize this none Mm -hmm. of the coaches picked it up and I and I was sharing it with some of the athletes other athletes I said see this is exactly what I'm talking about and one of the athletes I was talking about was a top-notch state champion I said see coaches mainly go towards you guys not all coaches but good majority because you guys make them look good Mm -hmm. yeah you run a 438 40 yard dash yeah of course people are going to gravitate towards you but the biggest thing was this kid the PR three times in one race Mm -hmm. wow he the state champ didn't even do it wow and I was like this game's got to change give credit where credit's due they went to the banquet still didn't get credit Mm. And it's not the kid was looking for credit, but he accomplished something. Yeah. That these other kids weren't able to accomplish. And even with the other kids, they didn't even recognize it mm. that we're on his track team. And it's uh, because of that, what you said, that label thing. Yeah. But that kid is special. 
I mean, he is special. Matter of fact, he's getting ready to come back and train with us again. That's awesome. You know. That's awesome. Ooh, but you can just tell just based on that that story right there, just how much passion Ooh. you have for the kids that you train. And yeah. I mean, I've only trained with you several times, a handful of times, mm-hmm. but I can definitely tell there's a mental side that you can kind of you can tap into while training with you that mm-hmm. um, and you definitely care. And oh, that's man. something that you don't find a lot of people that genuinely mm-hmm. care. And, um, you know, that's to me, I've tried to restructure the way I look at everything that I do. Mm-hmm. Like until I fully care 1000 percent about benefiting other people. Yeah, it's not going to feel as fulfilling. It's not yeah. going to it's not going to grow as much as you want it to grow. Oh, no. But I guarantee because there's that trust factor of letting go of the ego a little bit and just saying, no, man, like I'm going to let the process yield and do it in the way that I want to do it in yep. a way that is genuinely benefiting others. So definitely commend you on that, bro. And I feel like I appreciate um, you embody that really well and something to, to learn from as well. Um, let's see. Anything else that's on your mind right now? That's, uh, that's yeah, going let me through share that? this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember when we first started, is two little kids, three, my daughter and the two McDonald kids. And uh, we used to do the Vertimax left and right. They would run downstairs. The, the girls would, the girls would uh, as time went on, there was more kids that came, but the girls would race the boys. I mean, they would be with the Vertimax on. They'd do a lateral stuff. And they would get up down and back 30 times. Well, the girls did it. 31 the guys would do it 32 you know it was so fun because they were so innocent Mm. you know and it was it was a kick in the pants because thinking back those are some of the best times yeah those are some of the best times they're gone they're just memories now but I, I reflect on that a lot and I got you know we have a young man that even though we work in a dungeon it's not that big like you said before before he ran a four five. Now he runs a four three eight, and we didn't time him. Mm-hmm. He was electronically timed at college. Four five to four three eight. Yeah. But his story was when he came the first time he came. It was one of those workouts I wanted to see what he was like mentally. Yeah, I wanted you that to go over one. that. I wanted you to go over that. Yeah, so there's three of them. There's uh, his two cousins and him. He looked like an athlete. He smelled like an athlete. So we're sitting there, and next thing I know. I put him in, put him in a different. I put him in a lunge position, right? Oh my goodness! If you, I wish I had taped this. <laughs> this kid could not even do it, really. I mean, he. I was like, oh, okay. You, you got all these attributes, but you can't do this. Okay, that's fine, no problem. He didn't even want to go through the workout after that, and so his uncle was yeah, like, "It's not a fun workout." No, his, his uncle was that. like, "What do you think?" I said, "I can't repeat it." over the podcast but I had some words right and I didn't say it for the ki- say it in front of the kid but uh he didn't want to work out with us mm. but his two cousins kept coming back kept coming back so he comes back a second time this time is is hot and we're in the dungeon and they's they're sweating and they're doing a, the kids are labeled this one workout called a karma workout right mm. and uh, they were doing a karma workout and he's sitting there looking at them. They're sweating. They're putting in work. And the mental part is just getting to them. It's like, oh, man, you can see. They're like, whoa, what am I doing here? Why am I here? But after a while, they caught their they caught their bearings. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a whole bunch. It wasn't heavy weight. It wasn't any of that kind of stuff, okay? And uh, so he leaves the room, goes to the other room to watch TV. I was like, oh told his uncle I told you what he was you know uncle kind of laughed yeah you're right because everybody was telling him how good he was so mom put her foot down says oh no son you're going back and you're going to do this so she came and interviewed me no problem answered her questions told her what I what I expected told her what I expected of her and him and we had him in October to February senior year Will I didn't have much time it's cold outside, right? Mm-hmm. Raining and stuff. So we didn't get it. We didn't hit the track. We lifted. We did body weight stuff. We did all sorts of stuff. But the mental part is what we really hit. And 
this kid had such bad grades that certain schools didn't even want him. Mm. But he was a Pac-12 player. We get to uh, close to February, and I look back and I said, hey, you know what, buddy? You've come a long way. Your grades sucked, but now you've got him up. He's still thinking that somebody's going to recruit him because everybody lied to him except for his mother and his uncle. Oh, they'll still come for you. They'll still come for you. All these kids were, all these mm-hmm. coaches were taking his speed, his athleticism, and lying to him and not telling him about his grades. I told him, you're not as good as you think you are. You're not as fast as you think you are. I'm not going to, I'm not going to kiss up to you, and nor do I want you to kiss up to me. This is what I see. You tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I will apologize. Mm. I didn't have to apologize, which was good. I would have done it, but we mapped out everything. Will, this kid ran 11.79 his first race. Wow. Slow, right? Slow. By the end of the season, he's running a 10, 10.79. First 200 was a 20, 22.85 or 9, whatever it was, right? End of the year, state champion. Mm. But back to that mental part, he's lining up for the 100. And I'm right down the line. And the kid next to him moves his hand. The kid goes, looks over at his hand, right? I said, race is over. He lost. He lost his concentration. He lost his focus. Just by the kid moving his hand. Runners, get get ready, take your marks, get set, bam. Kid out leaned him. Came up to the stands. We had some words. We put all this time in. We put all of this, everything in late nights his mom used to have to work at get up at three o'clock in the morning he wouldn't leave the dungeon until sometimes 10 11 12 o'clock and for him to lose focus in that moment wasn't acceptable for all the work he put in i didn't care about what i put in it's what he put in he goes okay i'll tell you what i'm gonna do i said what are you gonna do i'm gonna run a 200 i'm gonna run a 21 6 do it so he sat out there, he was focusing, bang, gun goes off. He ran a 21-6-5 state champ. Wow. Because he put it back in here. Kid is phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's an awesome story. And I definitely, I don't know, as you were describing it, that's something that I feel is directly correlated to confidence. Like you let go of the thoughts, and I feel like, you know, if you're comparing – you're obviously looking outside of yourself and not mm-hmm. trusting the work you put in. I really like the way that you said that. And that's something that I've definitely tried to apply in my workouts. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, bro, you've spent hours and hours and <laughs> hours and hours and hours on your craft. And mm-hmm. it is great to continuously try and grow and, and alter and, and tweak certain things to mm-hmm. try and be better. But when it comes to the game or it comes to the race or it comes to whatever it is, You've got to go into an embodied presence versus a thought presence and trust everything that you put in. And I would be very interested to, to discuss that with you because you are dealing with people who are going to have to work really hard mm-hmm. with you Yeah. and on top of the sport they're playing. Mm-hmm. And with me, I think when I got in the weight room, it wasn't like I was trusting my body more mm-hmm. when I was doing it by myself or yeah. going through Eastern and stuff like that. It wasn't like I was trusting my body more. I was working super hard because I felt like I needed to train harder and mm-hmm. get better. And I think there's a subtle mind shift there because if you don't learn to trust your body after each workout and relax after, mm-hmm. then, yeah, when it comes to the game, you're always going to continuously think you have to do more yep. or you didn't put it in enough work. And that's more worry and doubt, more thoughts that you have to non judgmentally let go of and tap into that strength. Yeah. Um, how do you balance that with the, the workouts that you give the, the kids and make sure that they're aware of that, that <laughs> thing? Because you, you very well know, it's like you could put in all the work. If you yeah. lose that mental state, it's not going to do shit, really. Yeah. Um, balance. There is no balance. Because think about it. Normally when you, see ba- when you see balance, this is balance, right? It's going nowhere. Mm-hmm. So I'm... Our goal is to teach the kids, create your own balance. 
being a, uh, having a family, my balance, I have to create it down in the dungeons, up here some days. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Family life is here some days. Some days family life is here. Dungeon is here. So I have to create my own balance, and in the process, I teach the kids how to create their own because the ocean does what? Ebb and flow, right? Mm-hmm. You hear so many parents. You got to. It's it's all about balance. If you balance, you're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. You're a stalemate. Create the balance. You don't always have to be studying. I mean, I've, we got a kid that's a 4.0 student, and I admire the kid because what he did with his four point, he keeps getting the four point. But when I first met him, he spent 300 hours playing a video game. <laughs> That's dedication right there. Yeah, so <laughs> you, you see, yeah. he created his own balance. Yeah. And so we try to, not try, we help the kids create I like that. balance because yeah. if we go by the, the traditional word of balance, hey, you and I wouldn't even be here yeah. today. You For know, sure. We would not be here today at all. And, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what we do. We, we, we help them create balance and we get them to understand – Focus, you have to manage your focus. Stop managing your time. Because a lot of people manage a lot of people mm. manage their time, right? And they get into a rush to nowhere and yeah. always looking over their shoulder, thinking about the past, thinking exactly. about the future. Exactly. So think about it. When we when the first workout you did, mm-hmm. did you manage the time that was on there? That I told you that you had to do a certain thing, or were you managing your focus? Mm, it depends. I mean, you weren't really telling me the time that I had either. So it was kind of <laughs> your focus. You're kind of left with the focus and you mm-hmm. have to create your own rhythm of how you're going to get through it. Mentally. Exactly. Um, and that's, I mean, now that you say it, that's, that's kind of good awareness. Yeah. You like, did a darn good job. You, re- yeah. you really did. Because now if I was to t- take somebody that didn't know either one of us and I said, you need to do this for five minutes. The key the where I blew it was I told them five minutes. Yeah. But on the other hand, let's see what they do with the five minutes. Are they going to focus on how much time? Hey, Will, how much time? How much time yeah. left? How yeah, there's, time? there's I think, benefit to telling them both. Like, mm-hmm. let's say, for example, you know, they're holding the zercher squat for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. If you tell, if you don't tell them the certain amount of time, you want to see when they drop it. But mm-hmm. if you do tell them the time, then you got to see, okay, are they counting in their mind how fast? Oh, let me get rid of this. Yeah. Or what are they What are they putting their faith into at that point, themselves there or the music? There you go. Yeah. Exactly, because every workout, that's the cool part. Every workout that I put people through or we put people through, mm-hmm. I've done it two yeah. or three or four times. Have I failed? Oh, yes. Has my mental always been sharp? No. No, no, no. Do I think did I manage my manage the time? Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. I just started learning how to manage the focus. Yeah. Did I know this the whole time? No. Yeah. I'm always constantly learning and I'm constantly teaching. And it's like, man, if I had learned to manage my focus, I would have made it through a lot of those workouts. I mm-hmm. made it through every single one the first time, right? It was going back and doing them again. Yeah. Because the pain or the, yeah you remembered it exactly or interesting the being uncomfortable yeah oh man you're like and plus i was by myself yeah that's even more difficult oh, you got no one pushing you yeah i'm talking to myself yeah you know i'm the ceo of this up here yeah so i'm gonna talk to myself <laughs> whether it be good or bad right and i'm like man i'd rather be vacuuming right now i'd rather be taking the dog for a walk i'd rather be doing anything but doing this right now mm-hmm. so i I know how the kids feel. I know how you felt. You're not a kid um, at all, but I know how you guys feel. Mm -hmm. That's the cool part about it because one of the reasons that drives, one of the things that drives me is that I get a chance when I go through these workouts, I can talk mess. Mm -hmm. Oh, I I love that. I love that because I can say, I went through that same thing. Yeah. Or my grandmother that's 102, (laughs) she went through that same thing. You hit me with that today. I got you with that today, (laughs) huh? Well, and one thing that I definitely want to to note is when we discuss these things, and I'm really glad you said it, you're mm-hmm. like, no, man, like there's days when I didn't have that focus. 
we have to be very careful, I think, sometimes in these spaces where mm-hmm. we bring guys on who I feel like are co- accomplished in what they do. Mm-hmm. There aren't the best days all the time. You're not always going to be dialed in. Uh, you're not always going to have that, but it's how you bounce back and it's how you are able to learn from those times that you're off, which yes. goes back to what I said earlier when you get a person who's stressed and you want to teach them, okay, what made you that? What mm-hmm. got you to being stressed? Can you be aware of the reasons why these things are occurring versus, exactly. oh, I just, I couldn't get through the workout today. I, I just didn't have it today. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a, that's a huge thing to note. And is like, the, you can't have judgment in that process and, and you're not always going to be perfect. Cause I think mm-hmm. in the podcast setting, especially if we've only discussed one time, mm-hmm. people are gonna be like, Oh, Andre said, you know, keep your focus. And, and that's how you got to succeed. Yeah. To whereas, yes, that is, but there's a process to get there. And there's a reason why yes. you're going to see people that you trust like yourself. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I know a lot of these things. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of these things, but you have to be put in situations to test it. Exactly. Cause it's got to go from intellectual to embodying and mm-hmm. then faith and trust and then confidence. Exactly. And, um, so I think you definitely have a great awareness of that as well. I appreciate that. Yeah. Cause think about it. If you and I are working out and we only have five sets of 10, our mind's already scheduled. Okay, well, we might get two, three extra reps out of that whole thing, right? But when you're dealing with time, Mm -hmm. that's a totally different animal right there. It's like, man, okay, Mm -hmm. uh, five sets of 10. I think I'll take that today. You know, so there have been certain days where I wanted to just take that five sets of 10 and walk out. But then again, I say, man, if I don't attempt to do this, how can I talk mess to Will Mm -hmm. the next time Mm -hmm. and be genuine about it? You see what I'm saying? Right. There's a difference between, I'll tell you I fail. Mm -hmm. I fail every day, but I never lose. Yeah. I never lose in anything I do because I learn and I'm teaching the kids, we teach the kids, you never lose. Yeah. Only time you do, I should say, is when you fail to learn something mm-hmm. from that. So it's like, no, I don't lose. Yeah. No, that's huge. Period. And I love I love the fact that you said it's like unless you've gone through the workout, you're not gonna mm-hmm. you're not gonna talk mess. And I I've experienced coaches who have never played the game and you you really wonder, I'm like, how much I still learn from mm-hmm. playing myself and the things that I wanna teach to the kids that I'm mm-hmm. coaching that I still am working through. And it's that's okay. You yeah. can still discuss those things. Oh, big time. But you still want to be like, okay, if you if you're not there yet, if you don't have that dialed in, you got to <laughs> stay in the space to get it right or you you sh- you really don't have the business to be talking about it. No. And I think that's another big problem is the authenticity of the the people that you're putting your faith and trust in to to make you better. Yeah. Because then it's coming from a place of someone else's words. Yes. Like something they heard that they, yes. that, oh, that, that, that's going to get them going. Yeah. And it's always got to come back to how can we embody it? And you said it earlier, I love myself so I can love them. Yeah. There's, it's always got to come back to the self that's discussing these things yeah. versus, oh, you know, Andre said it on the podcast and now mm-hmm. I, I know it. Now I'm going to teach my kids. It. It's like, maybe you could have the principle and now it's an awareness piece for you, but you got to go through that process. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I think that's a deep one for, for anybody in any field. Yeah. It's a trip because, uh, when I first met you, I just got done. Oh, this is uh, some cool stuff, bro. <laughs> cool stuff. Yeah, man. I just got done with my first, I think that was my first acupuncture. Oh, was that your first yeah, one? Yeah, I think that was my wow. first one. Cool. And, uh, always been wanting to try it. Right. Yeah. And you found like, the right guy. First yeah, try. Cause we had a guy in, uh, Portland. Cool. And he was referred to us by a friend, but that's when my son was playing ball. Mm. And it's so funny because uh, <laughs> we went down to Portland, two, three hour drive, and the gentleman was, he was cool. Yeah. Popped him in there, did these things, and he put the electrodes on it, right? So like I turned <laughs> him up on my son. <laughs> ah! He started screaming a little bit, right? So I turned him back down. And he, he, I said, how many times do we have to come back down here? doesn't matter. Just let me know. He said about three more times. We got back. He hit the track when he was running track. Shin splints were gone, but we still followed up. Mm-hmm. 
And ever since that point, I never got that vibe of anybody that I trusted. Yeah. And so uh, Dr. Bob was brought to us through a young man uh, nicknamed Cream Puff. So if he <laughs> hears this, you know who I'm talking about, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he was brought to us through through Sam and through his daughter. And that was the first time. And then he goes, Dre, come on back. Come on back. I show you something. You were sitting back there. We introduced, he introduced us. And then you'd gone to your basketball game. Him and yeah. I sat around. We talked. I think it was Tim came in. Mm-hmm. You came back. And I'd been there since 12 o'clock. Yeah, I was like, damn, Dre's been here for a while. And I missed a basketball game I was supposed to go to. But yeah. you know what? I realized talking to you guys was important. Mm-hmm. Because the knowledge that I got from you guys mm-hmm. and the feeling and the vibe I got from you guys was so important because I could take that and pour that into the girls. Yeah. That was important. Mm-hmm. I could easily, ah, well, you know, I, I yes, I'm supposed to go to the game. That's a, that's a game. I'll never be able to make that game up. No problem. But there's other games. But how many times would that have been the right time? Mm-hmm. With you guys, yeah. I mean, that was a deep. That day. was important. That was a real deep day. Yeah. Oh my! I goodness. wish we recorded that. <laughs> Ooh. That would have been crazy. Maybe yeah. in the future. Ma- yes. Uh, get the uh, boys. You here. guys ever get a chance to sit down with Dr. Bob and and, and Will? <laughs> Ooh, I suggest that you do. But if you do, let me warn you: you better come correct. <laughs> you better come correct because they will call you out. Uh, not in a not in a vicious way, <laughs> malicious way or anything. <laughs> Woo! But it'll get real. It'll get real, and it got real. But eight o'clock, I got we left out of that office, right? Yeah, that was a long time. I was, a, but time time kind of flew by because we were just tapping in. Exactly. What we were, were we focused in. on? We were focused the craft on. and learning and growing. And exactly. It, it was, wasn't time, and there was no phones. It was just genuine connection, and I've given that a lot of thought yeah. lately too. And I feel like. The phones, although I can text you all the time mm-hmm. and I can text all these other people, call them. When you're genuinely sitting down in a group and you are mm-hmm. connecting face to face, there's no more addictive nature of the phone. There's no mm-hmm. more other distractions. Nope. You're genuinely connecting. And I feel like um, loneliness is one of the biggest killers lately oh. now in our society. And it's not because we're not connected in the uh, communication sense. Yeah. It's just the settings that we put ourselves in to trust those people around us. So, yeah, no, that was an awesome night. It and was. It, it brings back good memories, but I know we'll have more. Um, it was a future. beautiful night. I mean, it was, like I said, we were, we were managing our focus. Yeah. And didn't even know. For sure. Yeah, that's flow. You know, I was just like, wow, this is cool. But I can tell you guys, please get a chance to sit down with these two. Yes, please sit <laughs> down with these two. And I know everybody's got a busy schedule. Everybody's got excuses for this or excuses for that. I've got four or five kids. I got this. Hey, you had those four or five kids. Mm. Take responsibility and sit down and learn something else. Yeah. If you can learn something else, it might help you relieve, delete, whatever word you want to put to that stress. Yeah, for sure. But that cell phone, it's a killer. It's a grenade. It is. It, it a, really is. It, it's a mental grenade. Yeah. I mean, you see people driving and mm-hmm. doing it. That's dangerous. It's very dangerous. But That's dangerous. What do you say? I mean, it's become such a norm. Yeah, because if you can't go five seconds without it at home, you're not going to get in a car and be like, oh, let me just not look at it for 30 minutes. Exactly. But, um, yeah, <laughs> deep, man. We could go all day, but I, I, de- I would definitely like to finish up with uh, just how people can connect with you. Um you know, obviously we should probably be open about this. You're so in the craft and being behind the scenes that I felt just super inclined to assist you in a process to kind of get your name out there. I feel like you can assist so many more people if they just had an ability to connect with you. So obviously we have your Instagram behind you. Life goes on 86, but is there any other ways that people can connect with you or um, anything else you want to describe about your training style, your um, how people can link up with you to to get their kids involved. Um, what's what do you feel like the best route is that? That's pretty much right the now? best way to do it. I'm not. Uh, I'm uh, backwards when it comes to technology. Yeah, okay? and yeah. I've chosen to be that way. Yeah. But you have brought me out of my shell. Okay, and I thank <laughs> you for that. Okay, of course, I'm not man. saying that in a bad way. 
this is a new area for me. So that would be the best way to get a hold of me. Um, you know, we want kids, for parents, if you decide to listen to this and it's worth your while, we're not always looking for the top-notch kids. Mm. If we get them, it's a blessing. If we don't, it's still a blessing. We're looking for kids that that are C's or D's or whatever that we can take to B's and and B pluses. If they get to an A, that's fine. Mm. All the top notch kids, guess what? That's they're not guaranteed to make it. You look at the NFL. All those guys aren't first round draft picks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Was Russell Wilson a first round draft pick? Nope. Was Sherman? Nope. But if you look at Lamar, 31 teams passed on him. Mm-hmm. 31. And look what he did. He destroyed all the rest of those. Yeah. They lost it, but no big deal. Just a perfect example. You don't have to be a top-notch kid to come train with us. We want to know what do you have inside. Yeah. Will That's you, awesome. Will you take the challenge? That's awesome. And you will fail. Yeah. You definitely you will fail. You won't lose. We'll teach you not how to we'll teach you how not to lose. Um, no, do we have all the fancy equipment? No, no big deal. Because guess what? How many how many pieces of equipment can you use at one time? Mm-hmm. What did you tell me today? It didn't matter because looking around, you're trying to figure out that last uh, the last set. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to figure out, man. I don't care about all this equipment or not. It, n- no equipment. I'm yeah. trying to get the heck out of this last rep. You're in the you're in the craft, and mm-hmm. to to that point, like you have everything you need to make someone a better athlete. That's yeah. that's facts. It might be tucked away and you got to bring it out, um, but you have everything in place. And it, the key is not the equipment that you mm-hmm. use. It's not the place that you're doing it at. It's like, are you getting better? Are yeah. you going from a C to a B? Or are you just tr- training at a fancy gym? Exactly. And I feel like that's – I feel like that is what separates you from a lot of other people and – I, I feel very comfortable saying that because mm-hmm. I have trained with you and I I've talked that. to you. So um, definitely looking forward to assisting this process and oh, and hoping to connect a lot of people with you in the future, man. I hope so too because, you know, uh, we pride ourselves on, sh- on putting people around us mm-hmm. because if I'm the smartest one in the room, please get out of the room, okay? <laughs> please. Please get out of the room. I'm smart enough to know that I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. And I'm willing to admit it. I'm willing to go back to the kids and say, hey, I'm sorry for X, Y, and Z. If I hurt your feelings, please tell me. Mm-hmm. Don't, be a, don't be scared to tell me because I'm human. Yeah. I might have messed up. But also remember now, when you mess up, I'm going to give you a pass. Give me the same pass. I'm human. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times people look at trainers and they say, you know, they have no feelings. Yeah, we have feelings, mm-hmm. but I'm not into my feelings, and that's one of the things we teach the kids: get out of your what, get out of your feelings. Your goals do not care about your feelings. So why are, are you so into your feelings? Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess I was being selfish. Yes, you're darn right. You were being selfish. What about the other little girl, or little boy that doesn't get a play mm-hmm. as much as you do? You're being forced to be good. Why? I don't know, but you're being forced take his or her place they shut up real quick that's crazy it it, it, it is never thought about it that way it's real crazy because (laughs) i'm like this back on the coaches thing if you pick a player you pick that player for some reason right Mm -hmm. okay then it's your responsibility to train that kid it's your responsibility to play that kid don't play that kid the last 30 seconds when you're up by 50 points. Yeah, yeah. Because a person like myself looks at that, not that you care about my opinion, and I definitely respect that, but I look at that, and I'm not the only one that probably looks at it that way. Something's wrong with you. Mm-hmm. You're showing your true character when you do that. You're telling me that, or others that you can't train that kid. Yeah. Then you should have never picked that kid. I love it. Well, we should probably close this one out, though. Dude, what an honor it is to, no. to learn from you more so. And I know we're going to get on some more Flowcast Ooh. together when we uh, tap in more. I but look forward to it. I feel like it'll benefit a lot of people, and hopefully it brings some more kids to, to train with you because I feel like that's the ultimate goal is just to 
connect kids mm-hmm. and, and parents to people that actually care and want to assist and you know create you know more skills and potential for their for their children so thank you man i really no, appreciate thank it thank you thank you this is my very first one <laughs> I stepped out of my comfort zone hey um, you did a great job you man. were you were cal- calm cool collected this is you got any uh deodorant <laughs> okay <laughs>